So we have this AI that is just kind of running around, minding its own business, but it's not standing still at any point, it's not doing anything uh, else at any point, it's just kind of uh, running about aimlessly, which is maybe less than ideal. So let's give it a state where it can rest every once in a while, right? So we have this state rate that we have set up so far, where we do uh, patrolling, and then uh, we had this wait task, and we tried to do that as a child, but hey, that didn't work, because that's not how these things are like structured. That's just not how they work. Instead, this wait task needs to be its own state. It needs to go from patrol, which uh, will change uh, from being named patrol to being named like move to, instead, to be more descriptive, to going into the wait task. So these are going to be siblings instead of a parent and a child. So when we enter root, it's going to move to, and then it's going to wait, and then it's going to go through root again, move to, wait, and so on and so forth. From there, we can build up some other stuff. So let's set this delay task to being a little bit less than 10 seconds. Let's make it five seconds instead. And we can give it a little bit of random deviation uh, of like one second. So it's between four and six seconds instead. Uh, we could even set this to run forever, so it's going to be waiting until it is forcefully transitioned into another state. But timing is actually exactly uh, what we want to do. And again, you can bind these to uh, outputs from other tasks, or to parameters, or whatever we want, really. So setting this up is actually remarkably easy, because in the move to, we can just add in a transition. And here we have a couple of different things that we can do. We can trigger this when the state is completed, so uh, whenever it is either failed or succeeded, we do this. We can say when the state succeeds, we move to uh, whatever we're going to be transitioning to, or when the state fails. And if you remember correctly, we set up the um, move to task right here to be able to say, hey, this task is finished either successfully or unsuccessfully in a number of different scenarios, whether that is not having an AI controller or not being able to reach uh, your destination. So we can say if the state succeeded, we can go into waiting, but if it has failed, uh, we can do something else, like deleting this actor because it's clearly in a position where uh, it just cannot move. Or maybe reset it back to its original position, or we can do a variety of different things uh, depending on what you need, but this is a way that you can easily make it go into different parts depending on what's happened. Uh, we can also just do on tick, so every tick, every frame, check a certain condition, and we'll get into conditions in a moment, to see if we should uh, transition. So if you, for instance, wanted to uh, attack the player when it gets close enough to the player, uh, you would check every tick. If you are close enough to the player, it has built-in stuff for that, so that's kind of cool. And then move into the attacking state uh, when the condition is met. We can also do this on event, uh, and this is kind of neat. We can externally, from our other code, whatever might be happening there, uh, we can send an event with a certain gameplay tag to this state tree. And if that happens to be sent while we're in this state, that will trigger this uh, transition. That's actually kind of really uh, cool. So for instance, if you're in a attacking state and you get damaged, you can send a event tag to make it go into a like damaged state, make it go stunned or something like that. For now, though, uh, what we're going to do is just on state completed. It doesn't matter if we failed or succeeded or whatever. Uh, we're going to go transition to a new state. And we can transition either to uh, none, which makes it just get stuck in this state. So it's probably not the best thing to do. Uh, the next state, so that's going to just go through and see whatever is beneath me. Like what, what is under me, I'm going to move into that one. Just to be clear, though, uh, this only counts for sibling states. So if I uh, add a sibling state to the root here and put this one like down here, it might seem like this is pointing to next, uh, but since this is a state that is entirely unrelated to whatever this state is, it's like it, it's uncle, right? <laughs> if these are siblings, this is the parent, this is an uncle state. It, it can't transition to its uncles or cousins or whatever stuff like that. It can only transition to siblings which is exactly what we need for what we're doing right here. But let's just run down the list uh, for the sake of uh, showing everything. We can do the next selectable state. So this just next state will try to just move into explicitly what is under it. But if this has an entry condition, which we'll talk about in a moment, that makes it unable to be entered, this is just going to uh, short out and effectively uh, go back to root, is usually what happens. If you try to enter something that can't be entered, 
it effectively just resets the uh, whole state tree. However, if you do next selectable state, it's going to effectively just kind of work as trying to select its children in order. But what it will do instead, it's going to try to select its siblings in order. So if it can't enter this waiting node for whatever reason, it's going to try to do whatever is under it. And if that's not possible, it's going to try to do whatever it's under it until it runs out of siblings. Or we can just mark this as the entire tree having succeeded or failed. Which, as you remember, uh, is useful if you're using subtrees or linked subtree assets, uh, because those will be able to communicate that way that, hey, the tree as a whole is now finished, and whatever tree has me running as a singular state can now move on, uh, because that will trigger the on-state completed for whatever state that is in. I think I want to make a video specifically just diving into subtrees and just setting up some subtrees to actually show you how these work instead of just loosely explaining it because i feel like that's going to make you understand it a lot better but within the context of transitions uh that is all you need to know uh for right now so with all that we now just have made a loop uh with a delay in it effectively so if we make sure that everything is compiled and saved and we run this now we see he runs he waits and then after a couple of seconds he runs again he waits and that will repeat uh, pretty much infinitely because we're just looping uh, through over and over and over again. So let's make something that is a little bit more interesting than this. When we're waiting on state completed, I want to check, for instance, the distance uh, to our player. And if it is within a certain range of our player, I want it to do one thing. And if it is not within that range, I will want it to do something else. At the end of our waiting task, let's add a transition. And here we can start adding conditions. We can make our own conditional checks in a moment as well. That's actually really interesting to do. Uh, but there's a lot of them that are just provided. We can just compare a bool variable. Uh, we can do a distance compare, enum compares, float compares, integer compares, or we can just give them a random chance. And this is the wonderful thing about state trees. It just has a built-in random chance. So we can say, hey, we want to give this like a 30% chance so 0 0.3 uh, to go into any like given state that we uh, provide it in with, which is kind of cool. And if you add multiple conditions at uh, the same time, so we can do this and a distance compare, you can see that this uh, has a little and on it. We can also change that to an or. So we can do, hey, if this randomness is true or the distance compare is true, this transition is now valid or they need to both be valid. So need to be within a certain distance and have that random chance uh, just roll in our favor. And we can add like a bunch more of these. Of course, we can then do um, this and this or this. Like th these binary operators work the same way that they would for like branch nodes, like just normal Boolean stuff, right? Uh, so you can set this up however you want. For now though, uh, we're just gonna do this as a distance compare. And there we can get, hey, the operator. We want to get equal less than equal, greater or equal, um, is true. It's kind of a weird one. Uh, so we want to check whether or not there's less than equal uh, distance between two things. So the source is an input, and we should just be able to get the actual location, but it seems like uh, since I'm using 5.4, this might be an older version which doesn't have that implemented yet. In newer versions, you have a built-in get actor location um, function here that you can uh, use, and then you can give in an actor to get the location from. That does not seem uh, to currently be working, which is actually the perfect chance for us to, instead of using a pre-made transition condition, to make one of our own. So let's make one that just literally checks the proximity to the player character. So we can just get blueprint class, um, and then type in condition, find the state tree condition blueprint base. And we'll call this uh, STC for state tree condition, distance to layer. And here we only have one overridable function, and that is receive test condition. In newer versions, you also have a function where you can override uh, the text that it displays as a little uh, explanation. Again, state trees are new enough to the point where it's actively uh, being worked on. Some things are a little buggy sometimes, like writing to parameters uh, as of right now, and it's constantly getting new features as well. I'm just using uh, Unreal 5.4 for this series. Uh, my experience using it has been at 5.5, and I can already tell like there's differences uh, in things that I'm missing in 5.4. 
anyway, this uh, receive test condition uh, just gets us a bool uh, that will either let us go through or not let us go through. So we need a couple of variables here. This will be the actor variable that we um, have in our context. So this will just be an actor reference and we'll set that as category context. We'll use that. And then we'll also just get player character. You can also make this like a target uh, input or something and then like this and make that a input and use that instead. But then you would need to supply that in, uh, which actually, yeah, let's do that because that's a little bit more fun uh, to do it that way. So we have our actor and our target and we'll get the actor location from both of those and we'll get the distance between those two vectors. Now I want to do a select here. And we're going to be selecting uh, based on a, a compare. And that will be of type e comparison methods. So we do that and then we get the equal to, not equal to, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, greater than or less than. And we will return our values based on all that. So we'll check uh, the distance between the two. Is that equal to a input that we want to have? So that will be uh, the distance be a float we can give that a default value of like 500 or something so we'll check uh the is it equal to and we'll check is it not equal to and so on and so forth we'll just do this for every single one of these so uh then we get greater than or equal to so that's greater than or equal i think uh you kind of get that point so then we have the less than or equal simply just greater than and simply just less than and if we hook all that up now we have uh, a condition check that we can reuse for like every single one of the uh, comparison methods between the actor that is running this state tree and whatever its uh, target that it is comparing against this. I also do make sure to hook everything up. So now in conditions, we suddenly have our custom distance to player. Well, that should probably be called distance to target, to be fair. And there we get the context actor in and the target actor we can uh, supply in through a variable. So now what we're going to do is instead of just keeping this as context uh, class for the um, normal actor, we'll actually change this finally to our state tree character because we're going to make a variable on the state tree character uh, for our uh, target that we're going to be comparing to. So let's make this a actor reference. And with that, we can now say, hey, the target that we want to get is the context actors target. And then it's going to bind to that variable. In the state tree actor for now, though, uh, we can expose this to maybe uh, make this editable on a per instance basis. But for the time being, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, set this to get player character after all. But this does make it more flexible, more reusable in different kind of scenarios to just make the task or make the condition check in this case uh take in a variable and then we'll check whether or not this is less than or equal to i think 500 is a pretty good one so if that is the case what we're going to be doing is let's make a new state so we can make the uh let's say jump i'm just i don't know what i'm doing but it will jump and after jumping it goes back to root within that range what we'll do is we will uh, transition to the jumping state and otherwise we just go uh, back to root so we'll try to do these transitions in order so we don't need to set up an entire like inverse condition for this one or anything uh just for demonstration purposes i guess uh, let's make a quick little jump task uh so we can make this task blueprint base state tree task jump where we'll make an actor that's going to be a context thing obviously let's actually just make that a character right off the bat because we're going to need that for uh jumping to be able to work and when we enter this state we get our actor we jump and then what we're going to do is we're going to just check inside of tick if our actor get movement which all the way at the bottom is falling and whenever it is no longer falling, that is when we will finish this task. And let's set this category to context. So now that we have that, we can add this jump task and transition uh, on complete. We go back to root. That's actually just the default. So we can just keep that there. 
And now whenever you are uh, within 500 units, it will jump before restarting. Uh, if we just let you walk around uh, a bit, it doesn't jump at all. But if I am within 500 units uh, of it when it stops waiting, it should jump before doing anything else. So we can just, there we go, and it runs away. So we effectively have it making a decision here uh, based on some inputs that we give it. And we do this on state complete now, but what we can do instead is we can do this on state tick. So as long as it's waiting, whenever we get into 500 units, it immediately will jump and start moving again after that. So that can be like, we kind of scared it. And, and it's like, ah, and, and start moving. Uh, so you can see it jumps and it starts moving again. And then it jumps and then it starts moving again because it's picking uh, <laughs> locations within 500 units every single time. Uh, but this makes it feel a little bit more reactive because it's checking this uh, on every tick. Now, ideally, what you would do is instead of just moving back into move two, maybe what you do is you run a query, an environment a query. I have videos on that as well uh, to get a location far away from you and make it move to that location instead and make like an entire like separate hierarchy uh, for that or like a separate uh, couple of states. But those are transitions. That's it. Now that we have uh, this condition made, uh, these entry conditions kind of just work on the same uh, principles, but except for being uh, evaluated at the start. So when you try to enter a state, you can just uh, put any condition that you want on here as well. So if a certain object is of a certain class, or if you have like certain gameplay tags on a container or whatever, it just checks, hey, is this uh, check cleared before moving into the state? And if it is not, uh, the state is considered unenterable and it, it will deal with it as specified. So when trying to select children in order, when you cannot enter this state, it's going to try to enter this state instead. So let's say for this one, uh, we can only make it move if the distance to player is greater than 500 and then the distance to player we set that to player target so now if we're within 500 units it's never going to enter this and all that is going to do is it's going to wait and jump again and wait and jump again and wait and jump again which is a bit of a bad survival tactic to be fair but i don't know yeah so it's <laughs> uh going to just keep jumping uh because we have this set to on tick actually uh, so that's maybe not ideal Let's set that back to being state completed. But it works as expected, right? So it runs away. And then if we're within a certain radius, uh, it will jump in a moment. But then it won't actually start moving again because it failed the entry condition of the walking state. And it will just wait and jump again, and wait and jump again uh, pretty much infinitely. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, and my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku.